السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We, we ask him for help and for forgiveness. And we seek refuge in him subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evils of our souls and from our bad deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whoever Allah lets go astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there, that there is no God but Allah alone worthy of worship. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared, and be aware of Allah with correct awareness, and die not except in a state of Islam, which really means live your entire life in a state of Islam because we don't know when we will pass. O you who believe, be aware of Allah and speak a straightforward word. He will forgive your sins and repair your deeds. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has already achieved a mighty victory. The talk today is, is about our journey in this life and really uh, towards the eternal life. And we start by reminding ourselves that subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us, all of us, when he created Adam السلام, and he took, he created the souls and uh, we all witnessed at that time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator and our Lord and our, and our sustainer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us to this life, to this second stage if you will, and recreated us in this physical form. And the life that we're living is the test 
that based on that test, the third life or third stage, which is Hayatul Barzakh, the passage during um, the, the, the life in, in the grave, and then the final eternal stage will depend. The only difference between the third one is that it's, it's limited in time, and the fourth one is eternal. And during the third one, if, if you left behind someone praying for you and, and, uh, or Sadaqa uh, Jariya, uh, something, you, can, you may be continuing to collect hasanat, inshallah. But this life, as people say life is short, but they mean it in a different way. As Muslims, we understand that it's really short compared to eternal life. And this life is where the test is happening. And I see here some, um, or many, mashallah, students. So you know what, how stressful could a test be? And those who are not students and, and uh, grew up from that stage, they knew that as well. We all know that a, a test is stressful. So how are we preparing for this test? Especially that the outcome of that test is so critical. It's, the impact is eternal. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of being Muslims. Alhamdulillah for being here together. Alhamdulillah for so many bounties, countless, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah for the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us and gave us those tools to pass the test. And I'm going to try to be as, as, um, as brief as possible because I want to get to, to the meat of the topic in our journey. So the, uh, the first tool is to fight shaitan and, and stop procrastinating. Hasten to do good. Life is really short. Let's internalize that. It doesn't matter, by the way, if it's 100 year, 200 years. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Prophet Nuh salam, lived for 950 years. What is that compared to eternity? It's nothing. For anyone who, you, you know, just think about it for a second. Eternity makes any number nothing. So shaitan tries to stop us, slow us down. He wants to weaken us. He wants to say, yeah, you know what, you could do that later. So the first thing is internalize what we're doing, where, where we're going, and go fast. Hasten to, to do goods. Hasten to correct and improve. In Surah Al-Hadid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Isn't it about time? This is the translation. Isn't it about time for those who believe that their hearts, and subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing this to the believers, not the humankind in general. Isn't it about time for the believers, for those who believe that their hearts should be humble for the remembrance of Allah? and for the truth that has come down, and that they should not be like those who were given the book before them, and the time became prolonged for them, so their hearts hardened, and most of them are transgressors. Big reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us. And subhanAllah, we are in a beautiful month that we could really, um, you know, take advantage of, inshallah. The second tool is to really embrace the community and surround your, yourself, myself, every one of us with the right people who help us, support us, remind us, really make us stronger because we know that we're human beings, we're weak. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the human being, um, mankind was created weak. How do we strengthen ourselves? We take advantage of our community. In Surah Al-Kahf, and today is Friday, uh, many of us are reading it, alhamdulillah, or listening to it, or memorizing it, and, and uh, reciting it. In, in uh, Ayah 28, Alhamdulillah, Rajim. The translation is, and stick with perseverance strongly 
to those who call on their Lord morning and evening, desiring his goodwill, and let not your eyes pass from them, desiring the beauties of this worldly, worldly life, and do not follow those who, whose heart have, have been made uh, unmindful of our remembrance. So don't stay away from those who are not remind, uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can strengthen ourselves when we're, we, we are in a group. And again, alhamdulillah, we can take advantage of this beautiful month for that. The fourth one is training. Many of us watch sports or, or uh, you know, competitive uh, activities, inshallah, in the, uh, you know, in, in the right way. And we know that any athlete, top athletes, they prepare, they practice, they strengthen themselves. They don't wait until it's the time of the tournament and then they go in and, and just play or do whatever they could. Students prepare for, for, for the test, right? Study hard. And it gets to that point, the day of the test, you try to be kind of collecting all the, the benefits of, of the study. So how do we do that from an Islamic standpoint? Well, alhamdulillah. Congratulations to everyone. We made it to this Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, we have an opportunity. This is a training camp. This is a boot camp. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us multiple boot camps through the year, like the, tenth, the first 10 days of the Hijjah as well. But we are here with a month that is so beautiful that has one night that could be more than 83 years of worship. So let's take advantage of that. And subhanAllah, there are others who couldn't make it this year. They were with us last year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them and grant them Jannah. And the reality is, I don't know if I will be there next year. And no one knows. So let's take advantage of the opportunity that we have right now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a chance. And the question to me, you, everyone, are we ready to take that chance? Are we ready to embrace the gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it? But thanking is not just by saying thank you or alhamdulillah. Of course, that's great. Let's build on it and take advantage of it. Ramadan is a camp. Ramadan is really about self-control, con controlling our desires. But it's not just about the food or drinks. Yes, alhamdulillah, that is sometimes very challenging as well. But it's more than that. It's a month where the Quran was brought down to the lowest heaven in that month. It's a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the best 10 nights the last 10 nights of Ramadan throughout the year. And one night, as we said, Laylatul Qadr. So powerful. It's a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a training camp. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it easy. He's saying, well, you know what? I'm going to give you even more gifts. The doors of Jannah are open. The doors of hellfire are closed. Which really implies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is helping us. And just, just this gathering is helping us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the opportunity to, to take advantage of that. We know the purpose of fasting. It's not to abstain from food. It's not just to say, well, you know what, I was able to, uh, to do this. Which is, itself is a good thing because we can control our own desires on the food side as well. But the, the purpose is taqwa, is attaining that level of piety that we would otherwise be incapable of, of attaining. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, um, Ayah 183, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who were before you so that you may have piety. That is the goal. That is the objective. How do we achieve piety? And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many places in the Quran connected the pious to Jannah. Jannah, to achieve that, it's by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we need, we need to get to that piety. So again, Ramadan is this one 
opportunity that we have right now. We either take advantage of it or say, you know what? Yeah, I still have a whole month. SubhanAllah. Today is the second day and within a few days, it's going to be a quarter of the, of the uh, first of the month of passing. And we know we probably have seen people who get at the beginning of, the, of Ramadan and, and, uh, and say, yeah, okay, um, I'll, I'll go to the masjid later on or you know what, I'll read Quran later on. I'm, I'm just so busy right now. And then the month passes. And others who are ready for it from the get-go, from the day Ramadan comes, and they waste no minute, no second. So, there are a few things that we should do. First, it's a boot camp, it's a training camp. Let's get ready. Let's first cleanse ourselves from what we were in. And no one among us doesn't sin or doesn't make a mistake. In a beautiful hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, كل ابن آدم خطاء وخير الخطائين التوابون Every son of Adam, really every human being, makes mistakes continuously. Khatta, continuously making mistakes. Wakhayr al khattain, and among those, the best of them are those who repent. Let's be among those who repent. And repenting, subhanAllah, the Prophet used to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a continuous basis every day. Make istighfar and repent. And that's the Prophet ﷺ. In Surah Az-Zumar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in, in uh, Ayah 53 and 54, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَى رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ The translation, O oh my servants who have transgressed against their souls, against themselves. This is addressing everyone. Despair not of the mercy of Allah, for Allah forgives all sins. He is the oft forgiving and most merciful. And turn to your Lord in repentance and bow to his will before the penalty comes to you. After that, you will not be helped. So the first thing, let's repent. Let's really internalize, make the niyyah, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from what we know and what we don't know as well. The second thing in Ramadan, before we start talking about, you know, reading Quran and, make, and praying taraweeh and, and all of this, there are some bare minimums that we have to do. And subhanAllah, sometimes we, we, uh, we uh, set our priorities incorrectly by focusing on praying taraweeh, for example, and maybe missing the, the Isha in Jama'ah. So you see someone hastening to, uh, to, uh, to get to the taraweeh time and not doing the same for Isha. Or there are many other worse examples where people fast and skip prayers or and i don't want to look at those examples let's first set the bare minimum obligatory uh, uh, worship from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trumps voluntary ones and then on top of that we start building the second thing that i want to remind myself and everyone is there is a concept of no harm in islam causing no harm it's um, you know, getting to uh, doing, uh, uh, you know, I want to reach the masjid on time to pray, but I cut someone off in traffic. That is not the, the bare minimum of Islamic behavior. And inshallah, none of us here do this, but if you see someone, also remind them, right? Back to community, strengthening ourselves. The third one is to go grab as much as possible from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a treasure or really multiple treasures in this month. Now the question is, what do we go after? Do you have a plan? Are we thinking about how do I maximize our time? How much can I do? I'm a human being. I need to sleep. I need to eat. I need to work still and so on, right? Students need to study. Many, alhamdulillah, are on uh, March break, uh, uh, at least, uh, or spring break, starting next week. Great, but 
you still have obligations. So how do you balance all of this? What is our, uh, our priority in this month? And even in your, the time that you can have, which acts do we focus on? Alhamdulillah, abwaabu al-khayru kathir. The doors of good are plenty. This is the good news. And every one of us has a different, maybe passion for something, a way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some are really good at praying more, reading Quran. Fasting uh, is obligatory, so that's the basic here, but maybe planning to fast the six days of Shawwal and so on and so forth. But most importantly, hasten to do that good. The first thing that we want to think about in Ramadan is dua. In the ayat, and, and I don't have time to, to go through them, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ramadan as a month that we should uh, fast, immediately after, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I am here answering the, 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 the question or the supplication of those who, who do that. Subhanallah, dua is so intertwined with Ramadan. How are we dedicating time to dua? It's not about, you know, one second after uh, the, uh, Maghrib prayer, uh, you make dua, which is great. Or at the time you break your fast, great, fantastic. Are you dedicating time for dua? Dua could be the, what opens the door for, for khair, for um, goodness, for things that you worry about, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away from you. So many things. There is nothing between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We raise our hand anytime we face the, the qibla if we can and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Raise, even raising our hand is not, is not mandatory. You could be just asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is the month of charity. And the Prophet والسلام, being the best example ever was most generous in Ramadan and even more generous in the last 10 of Ramadan. So how do we take advantage of Ramadan to really give charity? And by the way, that takes a little bit of planning. If you really want to maximize the charity, how can you free up some dollars? How can you save from something else that comes later? How can you really, you know, maybe adjust some spending? But it's worth it because everything is multiplied in this month. And, and by the way, there, there, um, there are... Uh, some people think that it's, it's only 70 times in Ramadan and, and so on. Actually, there is no strong proof that there is a limit to, to that um, amount of multiplication. And the hadith about the, uh, the uh, nafila being like a fard is actually a hadith ta'if, wallahu alam. But the point is, it's multiplied. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous. And when it comes to charity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes it as a loan. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us and then what we give back to one of his servants, for example, he takes it as a loan and he multiplies back to us. And imagine what happens in Ramadan. Ramadan is the month of Quran. It was revealed or really brought down to the lowest heaven. But more importantly, the Prophet ﷺ used to review Quran with Jibreel every, month, every year in Ramadan. The Prophet ﷺ used to do that. What can we do? Last one here is Ramadan is the month of change. And many of us don't think about it this way. And in fact, sometimes people think about, okay, what's left in Ramadan? Oh, I, I have another 28 days or 27 days. Let me just make sure I get by, which is great. But this is the month of change. Changing bad habits, changing behavior, changing, you know, um, I used to not pray sunnah after Maghrib. Let me start in this Ramadan and make it a habit. Think about what, even if it's a single one thing that you're going to start now in Ramadan and keep throughout the year, inshallah, even if it's a single thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the Prophet ﷺ, we know that tiny bit of work, but consistently is much better than something that, doesn't, that is not consistent. And we know that the reward for, uh, for uh, Ramadan is nothing but something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most generous. The reward is not prescribed. We don't know exactly what it is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, everything for the human being except siyam is for me and I'll reward for it. Ya Allah, 
let's seek that generosity from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Allah, you are the generous. Give us from your generosity. And by the way, there is nothing wrong in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with full conviction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give us, will give us, and we ask more. He loves that. Subhanallah. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله العلي العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربي ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله I'm watching the time so I'm gonna recap إن شاء الله our journey in this life, this life is really short, but it's because we understand that it leads to, inshallah, an eternal life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all among the people of Jannah, among the people of Firdaus. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us tools to pass the test, which is this life. First one, fight shaitan. Hasten for, to do good. Second, surround yourself with the good people that support you and, and help you. We all need it. We are, we're all weak. The third one, let's take advantage of the training camp that we have right now, like Ramadan. And the question that I would like to ask you to think about leaving here is, how can you personalize your plan? Think about what you personally will do in this month. Write it down. Even if you don't achieve it all, Think about a few things that you want to do in this Ramadan and maybe one thing that you want to keep throughout the year, inshallah. Let's make it practical. And yes, sometimes people say, are you going to do only, uh, the things only in Ramadan? There are things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it, makes it easy for us in Ramadan that we may not be able to sustain, but let's keep at least one. Think about it and set your goal to fight shaitan. Second one is... Um, really maximize the outcome, maximize the reward. And subhanAllah, niyyah, the intention, sincerity, and khushu'ah. And I don't know how to translate the word khushu'ah other than being completely present with in, in the, in the uh, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, we see this in, in, in prayers or someone reading Quran and crying and someone else reading the same ayah at the same time and not feeling the same feeling. The difference is the khushua, is the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is nothing wrong. We, we all uh, have, uh, you know, our faith goes up and down. So let's try to, to work on that. But al khushua and uh, that pure niyyah to, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiplies the reward. And let's work on that because inshallah we may do something small but in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we do it well, it could multiply. Likewise, doing a good thing with the wrong niyyah is questionable. And in many cases, if that niyyah is bad, if, uh, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives, uh, it may not be in the right way. Like, for example, uh, giving a poor person and then giving them a hard time for it. That's a simple example. There are many other examples. So let's maximize the outcome. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who benefit from this beautiful month. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa arzuqna attiba'ah wa arina al-baatula baatila wa arzuqna ajtinaabah. Allahumma allimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima allamtana. Rabbi zidna ilma wa jalna min ibadika al-salihin. Allahumma habib ilayna al-imana wa zayinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-asiyan. اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن والعجز والكسل والجبن والبخل وغلبة الدين وقهر الرجال عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله
Mustaqim wa Allah, straighten your lines. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر Allah. Sami Allah liman hamida. Allah akbar. Allah akbar. الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله